I'm Aaron Critch, and today we'd like to share the results of a recent biomechanics of meniscus repair study with you. So our mission, should we choose to accept it, is to preserve the meniscus. And I think previously we didn't have a lot of options as a surgeon in terms of approaching our meniscus repair, but in 2022 there's been an explosion of options. So there's all inside devices with peak implants on the market. There's also all suture, all inside devices like the fiber stitch. And then for inside out, we have options using the 2.0 fiber wire as well as the mini suture tape. So the question for me as a surgeon is how do I decide what to use? So certainly there are tear factors that we can't control such as the location, the size and the configuration of the tear. But today we'd like to share with you some of the biomechanics of the repair that you have choice as a surgeon to use. So what do I want? I want high initial fixation strength. I want compression at the tear site. I want resistance against gap formation with cyclic loading, and I want high load to failure. So the purpose of this present study was to evaluate the initial repair load and relief displacement after primary fixation. We then looked at gap behavior during cyclic loading, and finally, ultimate load and stiffness during failure testing. So we created a vertical longitudinal tear to be a clinically relevant testing situation, three millimeters from the meniscal capsular junction. I think we'd all agree that this is a meniscus repair that's worth performing. So this was a robust cadaveric study with 60 human menisci in six groups, so 10 specimens in each group. And we randomized to all inside versus inside out. And you can see in the all inside group, we used three different groups of peak anchors, 10 in each group. We then used a soft anchor with the fiber stitch. And then for the inside out group, both 2.0 fiber wire as well as mini suture tape. So we created the vertical longitudinal tear. We then placed a vertical mattress suture, and then we completed the tear and loaded it into the clamps. And then for loading, we had the worst case scenario. So perpendicular loading to our repair site. This is how we assessed overall loading in the study. So each construct was standardized to 50 newtons of force with initial intraoperative tensioning. We then looked at the initial repair tension. So we saw the relaxation and measured the exact repair tension at time zero. We then looked at relief displacement. That's the change in length between point B and C. Once we had the initial strength of the repair, we then performed cyclic loading. We really wanted to look at how this responded with a knee undergoing physical therapy. So we looked at gapping and stiffness at cycle five, as well as cycle 500 overall for the knee. And then what we did is a pull to failure test. So we wanted to see where the weak links were in the system. Was it suture breakage? Was it implant breakage? Did the suture pull through the meniscus tissue? So what did we find? Well, we looked at initial repair loads. Interestingly, we found that all four all inside repairs did have significantly greater initial load strength than the inside out techniques. When we looked at the all inside repairs, the all suture fiber stitch had significantly greater initial load than the three peak constructs. What about gap behavior during cyclic loading? Well, here, when you look at the load displacement curves, you can see in the dark lines are the soft anchor with the fiber stitch compared to the three peak anchor constructs. And what you can see is with the same load, there was a more amount of displacement with the peak anchor groups. When we look specifically at load displacement progression, particularly gap formation, we found that the gap formation was the smallest for the fiber stitch compared to all the other constructs. What about ultimate load and stiffness during failure testing? Well, here we found that two constructs performed superior to the others. The first was the inside out mini suture tape, and then the second was the all inside soft suture with the fiber stitch. And here the fiber stitch was statistically the superior construct for ultimate stiffness compared to all the others. From this study, we saw that there were certainly reduced loads of inside-out knot tying compared to all-inside techniques. Why did the fiber stitch do better for initial strength? It could be that the stepwise tensioning of two loops was a more effective process with less friction-induced traction loss at the repair site compared to a single pull that tensions two different loops for an all-inside device. What about with resistance against gap formation? Well, here we found that stiffer constructs had less gap formation. In addition, we found that the ultimate strength helped us probe the weak points of these constructs. So with smaller size peak anchors, there was often breakage at this point, where with the fiber stitch, we saw this had a wider soft anchor support area, and we didn't have this same observation. 
So certainly there are limitations to the current cadaveric study. First was that the mean age of the cadavers was a little bit older than a patient you typically perform a meniscus repair. We did apply tensile load in the worst case scenario perpendicular to the repair site. And then we only tested a single tear type or suture configuration. So for me as a surgeon, there are certainly advantages to choose all inside fiber stitch meniscus repair. One is that it had the highest initial fixation strength. We want compression across the repair site. Second is it had the best resistance against gap formation with cyclic loading. It's hard for those cells to jump gaps to heal. And then finally had the highest stiffness and a high ultimate load to failure. Thank you very much.